Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to talk about amplifier topologies. This is the first of a series of videos I wanted to do on amplifiers. And they're not going to be contiguous. I'm going to do one video every now and then. Kind of space it out a little bit. But first of all, I'm going to start with a very simple amplifier design used in smaller devices like a transistor radio. It's a transformer coupled push-pull type amplifier stage. It has two transformers. And these are used in lower power devices, usually one watt or less. They could be used in somewhat higher power devices, but typically it's going to be one watt or less. These are used in everything from transistor radios, tape recorders and players, and you know other devices that needed low power audio output. So why did they use this design? Well, it had to do with a few things like transistor availability. You know, back then they had germanium transistors. They were usually PNP types. Although there were some NPN germaniums. Most common was PNP and a little bit later when silicon grew more prominent they had NPN silicon and less prominent were the PNP type silicon. Up until the early 70s when they started making silicon transistors better they had PNP types. It's a fairly cheap and easy amplifier design you know still with push-pull output but on the bill of materials it kept the part count low in manufacturing cost is everything so the, you know they try to minimize the cost though I would think later on that getting rid of the transformers would be a big plus and it was but they seemed to hold on to them in transistor radios a lot longer Although I do remember one transistor radio had a complementary type output with NPN and PNP silicon transistors and it was a really cheap radio. So maybe by that time in the mid 70s they were starting to pull away from this. Though still I did see a lot of transistor radios use this in the mid 70s. Of course then later integrated circuits came out where they had a radio on a chip and that cut down the part count and they even put the power amplifier stage right in the chip as well. Okay here is the circuit I come up with. I actually built it and had to change things and go back and forth until I got it working just right and then I drew out the schematic. So what we have is our signal coming in here to the base of this driver transistor. These two resistors set the bias and there's some resistors in the emitter circuit here. I'm not going to go into detail of what they do. It has to do with uh, providing local feedback to this driver transistor and uh, stabilizing its DC characteristics somewhat. And uh, of course we have the primary of the driver transformer in the collector circuit. So we input a sine wave you know, the transistor is biased on. We get a nice sine wave going to the input of the transformer. Up here is the power supply. I used 9 volts for the circuit. Here is a series resistor to help isolate the input from the output. The heavier currents flowing in the output could possibly get on the rail here and feed back to the input circuit. And, you know, that feedback a positive feedback loop can cause distortion and uh, oscillation. So it's kind of like a pi network. You have your capacitor here, a resistor, and then another capacitor over here. And I kind of drew this weird, but there's a film cap also bypassing the input uh, driver stage, I should say. On the secondary of the driver transformer, you notice it's center tapped. The very ends of the driver transformer secondary go to the base of one transistor here and on the other end it goes to the base of the other output transistor. The center tap is connected to the positive rail 
supply rail through a resistor and to the negative supply rail through a resistor. And that's to bias these. There'll be some DC flowing in here to each base to turn these transistors on just a little bit to bias them. And the other important feature of this transformer is to invert the signal going to the base of these transistors. One transistor is going to handle the positive side, the other transistor is going to handle the negative side of the signal because it's a push-pull type design. You know, think of it as one transistor pushing, the other transistor pulling. The collectors of the output transistors, one side goes to one end of the output transformer, the other collector goes to the other end of the output transformer. The center goes to the positive rail. The other side of the push-pull output transistors goes to the supply ground. There's a couple of emitter resistors, 2.2 ohms, that just help stabilize the transistor characteristics a little bit. There is a stabilization capacitor across the output. Without that, I was getting some really crazy oscillations when I was driving it into clipping. And on the other side of the output transformer is the speaker. Oh boy, look at this mess. Ignore this circuit right here that I'm covering. That's the headphone amplifier circuit from my other video. I didn't want to take it down because I'm going to do some more with it. But the rest of this is the amplifier. So this is the driver stage, the transistors behind that capacitor. The secondary of the transformer goes over to the two output transistors. And yeah, it is kind of messy with all the wires running around. This is the output transformer. And this goes off to the load and everything when we uh, put the scope on there and run some tests. One thing you might notice is this driver transformer is a lot bigger than the output transformer. And that's just because that's all I had available. So I just had to work with what I had. Normally, this transformer would be the same size or smaller. They are not swappable. This one has different winding ratios. In fact, if you measure the output with a multimeter, the output DC resistance will be like 0.6 ohms or something like that. It will be very low, while the driver will have a lot higher values. Okay, I'm going to move on to the test. So here is the output. Not the cleanest thing. And so there's clipping. Pretty nice symmetrical clipping. So if we tune that right out. So we're putting, well, we're just missing a volt, aren't we? Uh, about 8.9 something. We'll just say 0.9 volts RMS into 8 ohm loads. Uh, square that. Divided by 8. 100 milliwatts. All that effort for 100 milliwatts. But that is about what you would expect. I mean, that's just a little transistor radio transformer. And you're not going to get much more than that. I mean, if I used higher than 9 volts, maybe, but not a lot of output. Let's check the distortion now. Okay. There's the pilot signal. So we got 1, 2, 3, a little over 3% of a third harmonic there. Um, let's dial back. Yeah, that's almost at clipping. This doesn't have global negative feedback either, so you're not going to get a ultra clean signal. Oops. Let's turn that up. Let's pull that back in. With less signal. Yeah, it's staying around 
the odd harmonic. That's weird. It's just that ha odd harmonic. Something's not quite symmetrical there. And let me show you something else as well. Uh, let's turn this off. So disconnect the load. Of course, it's on that transformer. And I'll take out this stabilization capacitor. And wow, when it's hard in the clipping, it goes absolutely crazy and oscillates. So let me plug that back in. Let's see, we're going collector. That clears that back up. Now let's see if we can hear what it sounds like. Wow, it sounds just like a transistor radio. There is no bass whatsoever. Let's take a look at the frequency response. Okay, let's do the sweep. Wow, hardly anything. See how it grows? It's actually shrinking now. Shrink somewhat. Probably the response of that transformer. Twelve kilohertz, thirteen. response is terrible I mean this is nothing nothing like hi-fi this <laughs> this is awful okay it's recycling again let's see it starts picking up around two kilohertz or so and really peaks at three or four look at that again Okay. Yeah, around three. Of course I did, you know what? I screwed up. I had the speaker plugged in so you could hear that screaming annoying noise. Let's plug the uh, 8 ohm load into it. That's might make a difference the speaker impedance might throw it especially with that transformer okay reset and here we go I mean it's not gonna make a huge difference but I just wanted to see oh wow it is a lot flatter let's start over again here What's that? Yeah. Okay, it starts. Oh yeah, it uh I mean it's still gaining but it's a lot flatter. Yeah, it does get bigger there at Okay. Yeah, it's a little flatter. I mean, it still peaks up. You know, the speaker impedance is probably a lot higher than 8 ohm loads at 3 or, you know, 2 or 3 kilohertz.
Wow, it's uh, staying constant at higher frequencies now. It's dropping off some, but not as much. So the speaker impedance was loading the amplifier differently. And it's dropping off. Well, that it does that at the end because of the music player, but... Yeah, it's not as bad, but yeah, it's still pretty awful. That's why you want to test an amplifier with a non-inductive load, especially a transformer coupled. The uh, output impedance of like the other amps I tested, it probably wouldn't matter with the speaker or not because their damping factor is going to be extremely high. Well there you have it, a transformer coupled output stage. We were quite limited by this tiny output transformer. If I had a larger one I could do much better but you know that's something you would find in a transistor radio. So like I say, you're not going to get a lot of output. Here's the circuit in an actual transistor radio. You have your uh, driver transistor, driver transformer, the two push-pull output transistors, and the output transformer. Now this tiny transformer doesn't need a lot of response. The itty-bitty speakers in here don't have a lot of response below 300 hertz or so, if that. Probably, I think I tested one of these little speakers once and they cut out around five, six hundred hertz. I mean, not cut out, but they, you know, they start rolling off. So, that's about it. Hope it was interesting and thanks for watching.